Hello and welcome to Kingdom Connection. I'm so excited that you're joining us today. I'm coming to you from the Holy Land. I'm in the beautiful nation of Israel. As a matter of fact, behind me is a very famous mountain. It's called Mount Gilboa. And in what I'm going to share today, I'm going to share a revelation and a secret that you've never heard. It's connected to our fast. You know, we as a ministry and as a church, every year begin the year with a 21-day fast. We, we seek the Lord on the Daniel fast and we, we abstain from meat, we abstain from bread and from sweets, anything with sugar in it. And we just eat healthy, we eat vegetarian basically, vegetables and fruit, and we seek God's face just like Daniel did. He fasted and prayed, ate no bread, ate no meat, ate no sweets for 21 days. And in the scripture, the Bible said, God sent breakthrough to his life. And I believe he's going to send it to your life. And I'm so excited for the thousands upon thousands of you who are joining us on this fast. Today's message is going to connect the power of fasting with humbling yourself. Fasting is humbling yourself. There's a profound revelation and lesson that I'm going to share today on the telecast about King Saul in this very place where I'm standing that I don't think you'll ever forget. So stay tuned. And by the way, if there's a need in your life, there will be a number on the screen. We have an army of people. I'm not exaggerating. Tens of thousands of people are fasting and praying. And we're in a special season of fasting and prayer. So send us your prayer request. We would love to pray for you. Listen, Deuteronomy said that the Lord our God will bless you a thousand times more. And we just felt to just decree over our families and our lives and our calling and our purpose and our businesses a thousand times more, just like Deuteronomy 1 promises. Wouldn't you like to have a thousand times more of God's presence, more of God's favor, a thousand times more in your church and in your ministry, reaching souls, helping people, lifting lives? That's what I'm believing for, and I'm believing it for your life. You say, well, I, I don't know. That sounds pretty big. God is a big God. And sometimes we have not because we ask not. And we're on this fast and we're saying, God, give us a thousand times more of you than we've ever had before. I'm not asking for little things. I'm not asking for, you know, just just a, the, the crumbs under the table. And that's why we're fasting and praying and seeking God's face. So open up your heart and let God now speak to you. And if you're not fasting with us, jump in and let's do this together. We've got unbelievable material that'll help you. And I know that uh, I'm going to be your fasting coach. And as we enter in together, listen, the scripture said, when you humble yourself through fasting and prayer, and I'm going to teach that to you in just a moment. When you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God in due season, he will, he will exalt you. I believe that we're moving in to a season right now. This year, I think God's hand is coming up under you and your life and your family, your purpose, and He's going to exalt. He's going to raise up. It's not for your glory. It's not for vain glory. It's time. You've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Is there not a cause? It's time for a thousand times more of God's favor, of God's blessing, of God's anointing, of God's presence in our life. Well, welcome to another day of fasting and prayer. I just agree with you today for God to do something mighty in your life. You know, when you're talking about fasting, fasting is a way of humbling yourself. The scripture said, humble yourself in the book of James. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and in due season, He will exalt you. If you humble yourself, God will exalt you. The hand of God will exalt you. One of the greatest stories in the Bible happened here. One of the greatest lessons that I think on pride happened here. Scripture talks about in Proverbs that pride goes before a fall. Let me tell you the story of a man that, that, was, that ended in, in right behind me on the mountain that you can see behind me. That's Mount Gilboa. His name was Saul. He was the first king of Israel. The Bible said he stood a, a head and shoulders above all the other men in Israel. And when he began, he was extremely humble. The reason I know he was humble was when the Bible said that they called for him to be anointed the king of Israel. He was hiding among the stuff. 
He was so uh, humble and so feeling as though he was unworthy of that high, lofty position that he was hiding, feeling his own insecurity, feeling his own insufficiency. And the, the prophet poured oil on King Saul, and the Bible said, and he was turned into another man. I love that about Saul. It's a powerful verse. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes on you, he can turn your weakness into strength. He can turn your defeat into victory. And listen to this. The Bible said that Saul was born on Mount Mizpah. Mizpah in Hebrew means to be bent low. He started out in humility. He started out low. He started out humble. He started out meek, hiding among the stuff. That's the kind of leader God can use. But he died on Mount Gilboa. And the word Gilboa means to be exalted. To be exalted. Now you think about that. A man started on Mount Mispah being bent low, totally depending on God, totally humble, hiding, feeling like if God doesn't help me, I can't do this. But the more that God raised him and the more that God blessed him, and actually one of the most powerful verses in the Bible in the Old Testament is God, before he removed uh, uh, Saul from office and replaced him with David, said these words over Saul, when you were little in your own eyes, you were of great value to me. What a lesson that, that when you become big in your own eyes, God says, Pride is, is something that will cause your downfall. Pride goes before a fall. When you were little in your own eyes, there's nothing wrong with good self-esteem and believing in yourself, but don't ever get to the place that you feel like you can do it. Your talent is enough. Your education, your gifting. You need the anointing. You need God's presence. The more he raises you, the more you need to seek him. One time the Lord spoke to me about our ministry and he said, it's dangerous. We were really growing. And I was getting so busy, I didn't have time to pray and read the Bible like I needed to. And the Lord said to me, it's dangerous to have a growing ministry and a shrinking passion for me. Some of you have growing businesses, growing families, growing careers. Don't let your passion shrink. Because he ended up on Mount Gilboa, the mountain of pride, the mountain of being exalted. And they hung him and his sons on that mountain. The whole story of a man's life can be told by the two mountains. One he was born on in humility and the one he died on in pride. It cost him everything. It cost him his family, it cost him his children, and it cost him the kingdom. So what's powerful about fasting is that as you fast, you're humbling yourself. You're humbling yourself before God. And you're saying, God, use me again. God, fill me again. God, bless me again. God, I, I, I've grown. I've come a mighty long way. I started out with little to nothing. And your presence and your power and your favor has raised me. But I need you more now than I did then. That's the right spirit. I'm more desperate for you now than I was then. Now that you've given me much, then much is required of me. And I need you like I've never needed you before. And there's nothing that says that more to God. People don't understand why we do this every year. People don't understand, those of you who are watching this right now, you know, you, 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 I'm sure people have said, you're crazy. Why are you doing that? But it's our way of saying one of the big themes of fasting is so consistent throughout the Scripture is it's a, it's a way of humbling yourself. It's a way of saying, I don't want pride to get a death grip on me and my life. And, and you don't know, pride is insidious. Pride is, pride is there and you don't know it's there. Do you know that the first sin in the Bible was pride? The first sin in, in creation was pride. Pride got turned an angel into a devil because Lucifer was was according to the scripture an archangel that was in an exalted high place he, he said I will ascend above the throne I will be like the most high I it's all about me it's all about me that's pride and he was cast out of heaven think about it 
Pride can turn an angel into a devil. And I don't want pride to get a hold of me. I don't want it to get a hold of you. And it certainly has. I mean, if, we were, if we'd be honest, we'd all have to say there are times where we begin to become self-sufficient more than God, you know, desperate. And that's why fasting is so, so, so powerful. It's us coming again at the beginning of a new year and saying, Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, fill me again. And I humble myself. There's, there's only two ways of being, you know, you got a choice. He said, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And that's what you're doing in fasting. Or God will humble you. <laughs> so you can humble yourself or God's going to humble you. And that's why when I fast and when I pray and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are doing it as we're on this fast. One of the greatest things God will do is humble you. You'll see it. You, you, you won't, you, you'll think, I can't, I can't believe I was thinking that way. I can't believe I was acting that way. I can't believe I talked to that person that way because pride can, can blind you. But when you fast, God will show you those areas of your life that pride is creeping in. And, you know, just humble yourself. Let's be, let's be people who give God the glory. Nothing wrong with succeeding. Nothing wrong with being super successful. But give God the glory. That's humility. Humility is not putting yourself down. Humility is lifting Jesus up. Now, I just said something right there. A lot of people think that humility is, is just, you know, putting yourself down all the time. That's not humility. Humility is lifting Jesus up, not putting you down. And so, God, I give you the glory. God, I, I, you, you, you deserve the honor. You deserve the praise. Every achievement, every success in my life, to God be the glory for the things He has done. As we continue on our teaching today, I just believe that what God is doing on this fast for many of you, and I really want to encourage you, if you have not decided to fast, I have had so many reports everywhere I go, all over the world, of people who said, I watched you on television. You challenged me to fast. I'd never fasted before. I did the 21-day Daniel fast with you. And I'm telling you, my life was forever changed. There's a reason why God has, has, has blessed us to, to, to share this message with you today. I've written books on fasting. And there's a reason why. is because it is a principle in God's Word. Jesus fasted. Elijah fasted, Moses fasted, on and on and on. And it's a form of humbling yourself. You've, as you've heard me teach today, and as you continue to hear me teach, I believe that the Lord calls us at times in our life to say, come back to me. Come back in humility. Come back in dependency. Come back in hunger and thirst for me. Come back and seek me. You're so busy. You're so busy. Do you really want to have just another year of activity and busyness? This is a brand new year. It's the best time of the year to say, God, I want more of you. I don't want to have a growing business and a shrinking passion for you. I don't, have, I don't want to have a growing family with more stuff and less of you. I need you like I've never needed you before. You got children that need to experience the power of God. You got grandchildren that were not raised in 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 situations like you were, where where you were taken to church and, and all your life and experienced the power of God and the gospel. And I tell you, we need to get a burden for the next generation and the generation after that. And what you're doing when you fast and pray for 21 days and you say, God. Bless my family. I'm humbling myself. All God needs is one. Listen to this. The scripture said in Psalms that he sets the solitary in families. Solitary means one. It says he sets one in families to bring out those who are held in chains. When God can find one in a family who will say, Lord, I want you to bless me. 
And I want you to bless my family with your presence, with your deliverance, with your, with your supernatural anointing. God said, I set solitary one in a family to bring out all who are bound with chains. All God needs is one in your family. Why don't you fast for your family? Why don't you humble yourself in fasting and say, God, I want you to break every addiction off every one of my family members, my loved ones. I want you to save them. I want you to see, I want to see you move in my family like never before. And when you begin to humble yourself in fasting, when you begin to humble yourself in prayer, when you begin to say to the God who's blessed you, I need you more than I've ever needed you before. I'm telling you, I believe a thousand times more favor is going to come on your life. A thousand times more of God's wisdom and God's anointing is going to come on your life. I don't want my life and my ministry to die on Mount Gilboa. That mountain behind me is where King Saul died. And it means to be exalted. He started out humble, as I've taught you. He started out hiding among the stuff when he started. He was born on Mount Mizpah, which means to be brought low. Isn't that amazing? Started out low. But God said to him, when you were little in your own eyes, you were of great value. It's possible for God to take people and raise them up and bless them. And they get big in their own eyes. They get prideful. They get arrogant. They treat people wrong and ugly. I, I tell you what will break that off of you. When you fast, there's a brokenness that comes. When you fast, there is a, there is a returning back to the fact that that God gets the glory in my life. God gets the praise for every achievement, for every success. That's what happens. There's a sweet presence of God that'll come. I, I'm just telling you, we just felt like to decree that as you fast and as you pray, Deuteronomy chapter 1, a thousand times more, a thousand times more of God's presence, of God's joy, of God's freedom, of God's grace, on your life, on your family, on your business, on your career, a thousand times more of His presence in your life. Why don't we ask God for big things? I think God's saying, you, you ask me for little things, but I want to do a thousand times more with your children. I want to do a thousand times more with your marriage. I want to do a thousand times more with your ministry or your business, which is your ministry. And I'm setting myself in agreement with everybody who's watching this program, it's the year of a thousand times more. Hallelujah. Praise God. I think we're about to see increase. I'm praying it over America. I'm praying it over our nation. I'm praying for God to do something in America and in the world that brings us together, that causes us to humble ourselves again before the mighty hand of God so that He can raise, so that He can exalt, so that He can restore lives and families and, and God's plan and purpose in our life. And I want to encourage you. You say, well, I just don't know how to fast. Well, you just start. You just start. I, I've, I've done these 21 day Daniel fast for so many years. I've done the other full fast many times. And I'm telling you, it's just a discipline. It's just a discipline. And it's just a, having a made up mind and making a vow to God and saying, well, here I go. I'm going to do this for the next 21 days and you will be amazed at how close you draw to God. I've never gone on a fast that I didn't get closer to Jesus. Aren't you tired of ankle deep religion? You know, there was a river in the book of Ezekiel and Ezekiel got out there and said he got up to his ankles and he kept going deeper and he got to his knees and he kept going deeper and he got to his waist, went out a thousand cubits. A thousand cubits. That's what it says. A thousand cubits. He kept saying, I want a thousand times more. I want a thousand times more. And it went from his ankles to his knees. Don't you want the river of life, the river of the Holy Spirit getting deeper in your house, getting deeper in your ministry? He said, I'm not satisfied with ankle deep. I'm not satisfied with knee deep. He kept saying, I want a thousand times more. I want a thousand times more until the fourth time the Bible said he went out another thousand cubits into that river and there was water to swim in. And he, the scripture said he lost control and the river took him. I believe that it's time for the Holy Spirit flood to hit your life 
and things that you haven't been able to do, the Holy Spirit can just get you in its current. Somebody's moving from ankle deep, blessing, to knee deep, to waist deep, to it's over your head. It's over your head. You're, you're, you're just overwhelmed. You're being overwhelmed. That's what he said would happen in the book of, uh, of Deuteronomy. He said, all of these blessings will overtake you. Hallelujah. Like a tidal wave. You ever stood out in the ocean and not been paying attention and turned your back on the ocean and suddenly a big old wave hits you and it just overtakes you. There is a wave of God's blessing that is coming a thousand times more than we've ever seen and it's going to overtake our churches and our lives and our families a thousand times more in Jesus' name. What a powerful verse. What a powerful, powerful prophecy. Over your life today, I'm speaking. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin. And thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at JensenFranklin.tv.